Greetings everyone, I am Shujat Ali from Medgos Lectures by Shujat and today we are going to talk about GRDSs. So it's an enteric infection caused by protozoa GRDA lamblia also known as GRDA duodenalis or GRDA intestinalis. So when we talk about epidemiology, so there are 200 to 300 million reported cases worldwide and incubation period is one week. And when we further go in detail, so risk factors, major risk factor is poor sanitary conditions and living in endemic area. After that, if you are working with children, so you have chances of uh, contact with feces and through fecal oral route chances of ingestion of cyst also increases. So that's also a very uh, major risk factor for development of GRDSs. Unsafe water mean unfit for drinking. That water is leading toward GRDSs. Traveler and immunocompromised. If you are traveler and immunocompromised, you have major chances of development of this condition. So transmissions are basically by three main methods, three main routes, fecal oral route, food bone and water bone. And uh, when you talk about pathology and life cycle as well as pathophysiology, so there are two forms. One is cyst and one is strophozyte form. Cyst remain dormant in particular area for healthy time period. And after that, ingestion of cyst and after ingestion, excystation take place in second step. And after excystation, we have development of trophozyte. And that trophozyte also have a process of division which we named as binary fission and as well as adhesive disc for attachment with duodenum and jejunum and carrying with this infection and taking that person to severe condition. So that's how the life cycle and pathogens of GRDSs take place. But in case of pathophysiology, when we cross section that particular part of intestine. So disturbance in gut microbes, decreased nitric oxide, impaired antimicrobial functions, and intestinal villi, their shape, their function, they're disturbed and due to that malabsorption and apoptosis of gut epithelium take place. So basic in pathophysiology is one key point, structural and functional abnormality. In gut microbes, in antimicrobials and in villi take place which take us to the condition of giardiasis. And symptoms, symptoms include diarrhea, flatulence, blotting, anorexia, weight loss, vomiting, nausea, and 50% patients, they are asymptomatic who are having a GRDSs. So when you talk about clinically about GRDSs, like what sort of questions they have been asking in exams. So they are going to give you a clinical case with symptoms, signs, test, and also they will add traveling history like he traveled to some rainforest and drink water there so that's a key point in identifying and now we are going to start to discuss differential diagnosis diagnosis management and treatments and prevention complications so let's first talk about differential diagnosis so that's basically rotavirus gastroenteritis major form causing GRDSs in children celiac disease is autoimmune disease in which immune system attack on its own when we eat gluten. Ulcerative colitis is an ulcer and uh, develop in the walls of intestine in the layers. Functional diarrhea, diarrhea that develop without known causes. Infectious diarrhea is uh, due to some infection and having particular symptoms and uh, after that we have diagnosis like investigations which test we are going to do for that so first test is stool exam for that we are going to identify cyst and trophozyte presence in stool exam enzyme immunoassay GRDA lambda antigen strains we are going to detect when we do enzyme immunoassay gastroscopy for trophozyte detection in duodenal fluid, stool and microscopic culture for checking about GRDA lamplia. 
and uh, treatments treatment first treatment is antimicrobial antimicrobials they include metrindazole and all zole ending drugs but they are short term treatment we have supportive therapy as well in which we give fluid and nutrition to person and uh, for fluid and electrolyte support and uh, basically to cope up with uh, dehydration and uh, with fatigue we gave him supportive therapy so complications like we talk about investigation diagnosis treatment there are some complications which also we have for gids first is development of lactose intolerance malnutrition inflammatory bowel disease and reactive arthritis so there are complications prevention prevention is avoid drinking unhygienic unclean water while you are traveling to some hilly areas for hiking and camping use hygienic food there should be particular water treatment plants for common populations and must purify water before use and nutrition like zinc and vitamin a they are most necessary for that so in quick overview let me quickly uh, overview this topic and then we'll finish so we discuss giardia lamblia we discuss its two form we discuss pathology life cycle trophozytes and cyst we discuss pathophysiology how particular layers are affected structurally and functionally we discuss about symptoms include bloating nausea vomiting and uh, we discuss about diagnosis we discuss about investigations of choice treatment of choice preventions as well as complications remember one thing key point which they are going to give you in clinical cases with symptoms with signs and uh, they are going to tell you travel history so we have to pick that particular key point for identifying gids so that's all from today's topic guys in case of any query you are more than welcome my contact number is mentioned in channel as well as facebook page description i will be there for you guys in end i just request you that if you are new to medicos lectures by shujaat then don't forget to subscribe medicos lectures by shujaat and becoming my medicos family jazakallah khair thank you so much guys thank you